One, two, three. <laughs> My name is Tim Albright and I'm professor of trombone at Lawrence University in Appleton, Wisconsin. And I'm here to chat with you and help you out with this year's WSMA Jazz Trombone A2 Keep Smiling. First thing I wanted to chat about was jazz articulation on the trombone. It's a different animal than it is for trumpets and saxophones and we have some unique abilities and some unique challenges. Um, let's talk about quarter notes first. In this chart, and, and to be honest, in about 90% of any jazz swing chart that you'll get, the quarter notes are played short and fat. Da, do, da, do, da, do, da, da. You can think of the syllable D-A-H-T, dot, as a, a clear front to the note, but it also has a clear end to the note as well. Look at measure, uh, measure 13. Da 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 do da da do da. Short and fat. You can feel the space in between the notes. And then for the eighth notes in this chart, and again for about ninety percent of any jazz swing chart that you'll get, the eighth notes are played long, legato, um, unless they have uh, an eighth note uh, following them. Then they'll, then they'll be played short, but you don't have any of those in this chart. So um, look at the uh, pickup to bar 17. Do, 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 You can think of the syllable do. Do, 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 do. Nice and smooth, but well defined as well. And that can be a little bit tricky on the trombone to be able to get that definition. You got to move your slide quick and late uh, so that uh, you're not making glissy slap sounds in there when you don't mean to. Let me play that bar 16 and 17. <laughs> yeah, cool. And then the other thing that I do to add to the style of the jazz articulation here is like, uh, you know, all the great uh, trombonists and, and uh, saxophonists and trumpet players, I add accents uh, with my gut uh, at the peaks of the phrases, do, do, da, do, da, do, da. The peak of the phrase, meaning the highest note of the phrase, is often accented a little bit, uh, again, with, uh, with the gut or with a little bit extra air. Notice I'm still using a soft D tongue there. Do, do, da, do, da, do, do, do. But has just a little bit extra oomph with my air. Yeah, you can do that. Also, oftentimes at the beginnings of phrases, the first note of a phrase is accented a little bit more, and oftentimes the end of a phrase is accented a little bit more. Don't try take my word for it, though. I think the if you can take one thing away from this this chat is that I encourage you to listen, 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 listen to great trombone players, great trumpet players great saxophone players, uh, anything you can get your hand on, especially folks like J.J. Johnson and Curtis Fuller. Listen to their style uh, and see how they articulate and how they uh, approach jazz phrasing on the trombone. Um, 
You can listen to a couple stylistic things that I do. Uh, I'm adding a little bit, bit of vibrato at the ends of some of my long notes. And you notice I'm not doing that with my slide. I'm actually doing it with, uh, with my lips or my jaw. I'm simply saying ya, 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 ya at the end of some of my notes. <laughs> subtle motion but you can hear it real clearly on the horn yeah um, and I'm adding some scoops uh, as well uh, and those I'm doing with my slide I encourage you to to listen back to the recording a bunch and uh, and perhaps even play along and see if you can steal some of my style that I put on this one as well uh, breaths are a little bit tricky in this etude and I encourage you to to write out your breaths I know I did um, because uh, it's it's tricky to maintain a smooth sound uh, that's not chopped up and it doesn't take away from from the groove which I think is the most essential thing and that's the last thing I'll leave you with is the groove and ways to to work on that it's awesome that you get to listen to and play along with this killing rhythm section on the back backing track here and so I encourage you to to listen and feel like you're in the rhythm section Listen to the bass player at the beginning. The bass player is playing on one and three. Do bo ba do ba do be da 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 do da. So make sure that those quarter notes or eighth notes that you have on beats one and three really line up in the pocket with the bass player. And then the hi hat. The drummer is playing the hi hat in two and on two and four. Da bo ba do ba do be do. Da, da, do, da. Again, listen to make sure that your eighth notes and your quarter notes are lining up just right in the pocket with the hi-hat. Together, the bass and the hi-hat are playing every quarter note, so that should be really helpful. And then the ride cymbal, the drummer is playing a ride pattern that goes like this. Again, see if you can hook up your eighth notes and quarter notes to fit with this. Do 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 de, da, de, da, do da. and oftentimes the drummer will put in some fills uh, that accompany me accompany the accents that you have in here. Listen for that. And the piano player with their comping, they do the same thing as well. Um, they're playing in the pocket with the the drummer and the bass player, and they're also filling with you, uh, so you can listen in for those and feel those really well. Good luck with this. Have a lot of fun. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. You can reach me at albright at lawrence.edu. That's A-L-B-R-I-G-H-T. All right. Have fun and keep smiling.